Good morning, everyone. Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So I hope you all are having a fantastic day today. Today, Jason is out here. He's helping me and we are ready to work. So I gave you all a little sneak peek in my backyard uh, garden tour video of these blue barrels. And I uh, told you guys to guess, or I asked you guys to guess what I was planning to do. And of course, most of you got it. I am doing a rainwater harvesting system. So I live in California and I don't know if you all know, uh, I'm sure you probably do, it's all over the news. California has been in a massive drought for years now and there is no sign of it stopping at this point. So everybody in California is doing their best trying to conserve water as much as possible, which is fantastic. Um, however, I am a gardener and I love flowers and I love plants and I really I do love the drought tolerant plants and I try and use drought tolerant plants as much as possible however I don't want to use all drought tolerant plants in my garden you know I still want to plant annuals and I still want to plant hydrangeas and I still want to plant all the beautiful stuff that I love and so I have been on the lookout of trying to find a way to still maintain all those beautiful flowers I love but do it in a way where the drought you know, I'm, I'm still gonna be doing it responsibly, basically. Um, so I was searching online and researching and trying to figure out how to do it. And I came up, there's Jason, <laughs> he's already started. Um, I came up with this rainwater harvesting system. So um, I, I live in Davis, which is just outside of Sacramento. And you know, all of California is in severe drought, but we actually live in an area that's not in as restricted as most places in California. Like I know San Jose and LA area and San Diego is super, super restricted. We actually live in an area where we have reservoirs and they are actually 90% full, which is great. And they're actually selling our water to areas down there that are in more drought stricken areas so we the restrictions that we have so far we don't have any restrictions on irrigation any restrictions on hand watering the only restrictions we really have is um, they're urging us to uh, uh, use our lawn sprinklers only three days a week which we're doing we're only doing three days a week I would love to do more than that but of course I'm not going to so we are sitting pretty, at least right now, as you know, relative to the rest of people in California. Um, however, who knows how long this drought is gonna last. It could get better by next year and we could have a really rainy winter and it would be great. Um, but I think that they say to get out of this drought, we have to have like multiple rainy winters um, all in a row. So I have a feeling that that won't happen either. So there comes my blue barrel rain system. So um, as I was driving around Davis, you know, I drive around dropping kids off and working and all that kind of stuff. I have seen these blue barrels lined up along the side of people's houses. And, you know, I've noticed it, but I've never really kind of looked into it. So when I started looking into this rainwater harvesting and how to do it and everything like that, this company kept popping up and that was blue barrel rainwater catchment systems. Um, and so as soon as I saw it, I saw the logo, I thought, oh, that's the one that I've seen here in Davis all the time. And it turns out Jesse, the, the owner and the inventor of the system is actually from Davis. And that's, I think that that's why we have so many of these in Davis. Um, but it is a, a countrywide, I, I think it's just the country. I don't think it's, you know, Canada or anything like that. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it is a system, a DIY rain harvesting system where they send you all the stuff that you need all the equipment and everything like that and then they actually put you in touch they give you vouchers and they put you in touch with food suppliers um, these blue barrels they're blue because blue is code for food grade barrels so these are all food grade barrels um, and blue barrel rain systems the company puts you in touch with food suppliers that are trying to recycle these barrels so as far as I've read and I can understand uh, these food suppliers the limitations the restrictions that they have, which I get it because it's food that we ingest. They only are allowed to use these barrels one time and that's it. And then they get recycled or they go in the dump or, you know, they just, they can't be used anymore. You would think that they would reuse them over and over again for like soy sauce or alcohol or whatever, but they're only allowed to use them once. And then these food suppliers have 
all these rain, these not rainbows, these blue barrels that they have nothing to do with. So the cool thing about this blue barrel system is that they've put us, the consumer, who is trying to set up a rainwater harvesting system in contact with these food suppliers that have all these extra barrels. So it's recycling and then plus, you know, it's, it's kind of connecting the whole circle, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and then I also think that it's cool that Jesse's from, from Davis. So that's awesome. So I knew I was going to go with them and I was going to work with them as a company and they are just they have so many like videos how-to videos instructions they have they have the whole thing broken down into step by step and the really neat thing about this system is that it's multiple barrels you can add on or take away as much as you want so you can have as little as one barrel in your system or an infinite number of barrels I chose four barrels just based on space but if you go on their website you can calculate they have little calculation uh, um, I don't know, calculators <laughs> that will let you know, you know, if, if you want a certain amount of rain, uh, stored, then they'll tell you how many barrels you need or, um, how much, you know, how much you need based on the size of your roof and how much rainwater you get in a year. So I was cal I, I decided to stick with the four barrel system just because I don't have a lot of space, but I was calculating and the size of my roof and, um, the amount of barrels that I have, the four barrels, which is total 220 gallons I'm gonna be able to fill these barrels up with one inch of rainwater one inch of rainwater and they'll be totally filled up so I was looking at Davis's average rainfall and in April we get average one inch of rainfall so I'll, I know in April these four barrels are gonna be filled up and I'm gonna have 220 watering cans worth <laughs> of what rainwater to use on my garden in um, uh, May, June, <laughs> what are the months? Yeah, May, June, July, uh, August, and September come to October where we get another average full inch of rain, which will fill them up. And of course, I'll get a couple rainstorms in between, except for in July. I was looking in July. We, our average rainfall in July is 0, 0.0 inches, 0, 0.00 inches. And then August is 0, 0.05. <laughs> so not a lot of rain. So this is more of a long-term solution. Obviously, I'm not going to get any rain in the next couple of months. However, next year, it, I'm going to really start reaping the benefits of Jason and my hard work at this point. So, um, uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about it. I hope I, I hope I told you guys everything that I wanted to tell you. Um, I've actually filmed this clip three times now because my phone, which I film on, is not recording very well today. I think I have too much on there. Um, so yeah, so I hope I told you guys everything about it. Um, I will, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to film Jason and I working on this. I think that this is going to take us all day, maybe all day tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see how long it takes. Um, and then um, maybe I'll do voiceovers just in case I forget to tell you guys something. Oh, oh, I just remembered one thing I did want to say. So all four barrels are connected to each other. All the barrels in the system are connected to each other from underneath. So water is self-leveling. So it will self-level um, the whole system out. So basically in a normal, I guess in a normal rainwater catchment system and where the barrels are not connected on the bottom, um, you'll, you have to go through one whole barrel and then reconnect to another barrel and then go through that whole barrel and then reconnect this one. It will even itself out completely. So you are filling up all four barrels as at once and then depleting all four barrels as one at, at the same time as you use it. And of course I'm saying four barrels because my system is four barrels. You could have two, you could have 20, whatever you want. And then the other thing is, yes, they're bright blue, which I don't love. It's, I don't really mind cause this is in kind of like a, like side corner. We never go over here. This is more like a storage area. However, um, you can paint these barrels. So I think that one of my projects down the road, I don't know when, is I'm going to paint these the color of my house so that they will just blend in. And, um, and I think that they'll be perfect. And I'm excited to have the system. And I think it's going, I think I'm going to be thanking myself, uh, you know, a couple years down the road that I have access to this. If the drought gets any worse and then people are not allowed to water, like I know, um, very close to the town where I grew up in, which is Santa Rosa in Healdsburg, I know that they're not allowed to use any excess water. They have their own barrels and they have, you know, they have to use 
they're not allowed to water their gardens at this point. So people are having to pull out their whole gardens, which is heartbreaking. I can't even imagine that. Um, so I hope it doesn't get to that point. I hope we get a lot of rain this year, but if it does, if it does get to that point, I'm going to be ready with my rain barrel system. All right. That was a lot of talking. Let's get started with the first, we're going to clear everything out. Then we're going to, we're going to level the area and put the, um, these are going to go on cinder blocks. We'll put the cinder blocks down, but I'll show you guys that. Okay, let me show you a little bit closer about where we're gonna set the system up. So uh, let's see, over here is our whole yard, our pool, and then this kind of is over off to the side and it's a storage area. Like we just, I keep my um, my composting system back here. We have a bunch of like old scrap wood and soil and bark and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then this is my old greenhouse that I actually don't use anymore, but instead of getting rid of it, we have been using it as kind of like a dry storage area. So I don't love it. I don't want to keep it for sure, but this is the best we have right now. So so what we're going to do is we're going to take the four barrels and we're going to line them up right along the house right here because here is our downspout, our rain gutter, um, and then we're going to, so we're going to tap into that and then connect it to the barrels. So the barrels will be right along the house. That's why I think that they'll look really good painted the house color. Hope they'll blend in as much as possible. Um, so yeah, so we'll just move this over to this side and there's enough room. We've already tested it. Um, and then, you know, to access, we can just walk through this old greenhouse. Uh, yeah, and so I think I think it'll fit well. You know, this whole side yard area, I, I know eventually one day we wanna totally like revamp it and change it and make it a, like a really good store storage slash, slash gardening space. Um, but we're like, I said, we're just not there yet. So we'll get there. Jason, you've done so good. You've gotten almost all of it cleaned out. Good You're job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> halfway through the day, um, we ended up deciding to get rid of that old greenhouse. We never use it and we were only storing like our uh, lawn mower and a couple things that we really didn't need. So we took the time to take it all down. We put it on Craigslist for free and literally within 15 minutes, somebody came and picked it up. So that's good. Now we have way more room back here and way more room to work. It just took up a lot of the morning, but that's all right. It, it needed to happen. So what we've done is we scraped back all the landscape rock that we had here. And then we put down this paver base and that's just so that the cinder blocks would be level. It's really important for all of the barrels to be level because they are all gonna fill at the same time and they're all gonna empty at the same time. And obviously if one is tilted or um, one's higher than the other, then the water's going to kind of fill into that one and the system won't work right. So it's really important to get it level. I think we did a pretty good job with that. And now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start drilling into the barrels for the air holes. Well, first I have to lay them out, make sure I have them in the right um, spot and then start drilling for the air holes and then fitting the 
caps into the bungs, which they're literally called bung holes, <laughs> which Jason is cracking up every time I say that. Um, but they're called, they're called bungs, which are the caps for these barrels. Um, so the way that they have it all set up is they have instructions on how to drill it, drill into it and how to hook the manifold into it. It's very, very detailed, the, the directions, which is awesome. So we're literally just following step by step. You know, no thought is having to go into this. So let me get, let me show you guys what we've got so far. All right, so we've got all the area cleared out. You can see that the greenhouse is gone and all of that junk is gone. So I feel pretty good about getting rid of that. Um, of course, I have my trusty umbrella, <laughs> of course. And then you can see we I have four barrels and it's two cinder blocks per barrel. So we put down this paver base and then we put the cinder blocks where they need to be. They're 24 inches on center. Um, so basically you need two feet by two feet per barrel. And they tell you that on the website, they can help you count calculate how much room you have for. I could have gone all the way down this way, but um, I really didn't want to. I thought four was enough. And if I ever want to add to the system, I can add to that. So this is all set. Now I have to set the barrels how I want to. Let me show you guys that. So if I come over to the barrels, the bungs, the bung holes, they have one, there's one fine thread and then there's one coarse thread and you have to keep each one straight because the cap there's a certain cap that's going to fit well in each side um, so it's really important to keep it straight because one of them I think the coarse thread is the one that you want to make sure that you tap into with all your piping and, and stuff like that so from what I've read you just want to make sure that it's you you keep it specific and straight All right, everyone, it is actually day two. Yesterday, Jason and I got so hot, we couldn't even stand it anymore. Both of us just went and jumped in the pool because <laughs> it was like 103 degrees and we're working here against this bright wall. It was just, I, we, we like could not cool down. So it's early the next morning. I have already uh, put together the manifold, all the piping, let me show you guys. What we have to do is we have to use the drill and we have to drill the vent holes in the top or really it's the bottom because these barrels are turned over but this side of each of the barrels and then we have to flip them over and we have to get our bung caps and drill the holes in those and then after that's all drilled and set up then we will be able to connect the manifold so we're almost done <music> So I've got the drain holes or drain vent holes uh, drilled, but you don't want to put the vents in just yet. First, you want to flip the barrel over. And then looking at your two holes, you have one side that has coarse threads and one side that has the fine threads. We want the coarse threaded side because that's the side that you're going to be able to put in your tea in caps. And these are provided in the blue barrel system. So what they recommend is you stick a bag into here and then this is what's going to hold the cap while you drill into it because we need to drill into this T end cap so that we can connect our manifold unions, PVC pipes, I don't know what to say. We wanna connect it right here. Um, so I just stuck this bag so the bag is underneath so that when I drill in through here, the plastic's not gonna end up at the bottom of my barrel. It's gonna be in the bag and I can easily take it out and keep it clean. So I have my drill and I'm just gonna drill straight in the middle.
Okay, so now to secure these, you can't just screw them in, you have to kind of seal them in some way. So for these T end caps, I'm gonna use silicone. And then for these closed caps, Jason's putting on some Teflon tape right now. So I'll show you guys that in a second. But right now I'm just gonna do a bead of silicone around the bottom of these T end caps. And it's different because of the, of the sides of the threads. I guess silicone is better with these coarse threads and then uh, Teflon tape is better with the finer threads or narrower threads. Okay, I'm gonna put this in and then I'm gonna tighten it. This is called a bung wrench and you can buy this from the Blue Barrel website as well. Okay, so I've got this one all sealed with silicone. Now we are sealing this one with Teflon tape or what is that, plumber's tape, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's gonna hold it in his left hand and then he's gonna wrap it around away from him and Blue Barrel recommends four to five times. So that's what we're gonna do. And what the tape should do is it should give it a nice cushioning so it should seal in any gaps around those narrow or fine threads. And then this whole barrel will be sealed, except for this hole right here. We will connect the whole PVC pipe manifold system to it. And then that's where we're gonna get our water from. And these are upside down, so we're gonna flip them back over onto the cinder blocks. So I think we're pretty much done. I got the hose attached to the gutter and then I've got that all attached to my system. There are just a few more things I need to do which involve uh, going to the hardware store which includes getting a little bit more PVC pipe because I want I don't want my spigot straight out. I want my spigot to come up a little bit so that I can fill my watering cans. Um, do you want to test it and see? Yeah, we should do that. You're okay. You did that by yourself. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna test. Jason is up there with the hose. Um, he's just gonna put it down the, the gutter and then hopefully it should divert it into here and then start filling up the barrels. But this is where my spigot is supposed to go right now. It's an empty hole. So uh, if it works, I should see water start coming out there. All right, go for it. Moment of truth. Okay, I missed it. <laughs> it's starting to come out. Yay, we have water. Can you hear that? We did it. We did it. <laughs> just barely. No, just kidding. This was easy. You guys hear that? So 
So yeah, so I will have another PVC coming from here, coming out to here, going up and then coming out a little bit. And so then I can fill my watering can right here. I hope that that makes sense. But basically I can't fill my watering can. This is like an inch off the ground. So can you guys still hear that? Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> All right, so I think we are done. I, again, I still wanna come back and I wanna paint everything. And we have stickers like do not drink stickers that we need to put on these barrels just to make sure nobody makes a mistake and thinks that this is potable water because it's obviously not. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited and I think my plants are gonna be so happy to have this water. Obviously it's rainwater, so it's the perfect pH. Um, it has the natural elements in it like nitrogen. And then also I was reading on the Blue Barrel website website. It's also getting the the dirt and dust from your rooftop, which also fertilizes your plants as well. So I think all my plants are going to be super happy to have this water, especially if we have another drought year next year, which hopefully we don't. Hopefully we just have a really rainy um, winter season and wet season. But the way things have been going, I don't know. I kind of don't really expect it, um, but we'll all cross our fingers. So yeah, so I feel super prepared for next year. Thank you to Blue Barrel for working with me on this. Um, the only, you know, I only have a couple more things getting that spigot done um, and then painting these the color of the house so it looks really nice so yeah let me know if you guys have any questions about this system I will put the website and then also a link to their YouTube videos down below so you guys can check it out um, if you live in California or any other place that's dealing with drought I think that this is an excellent option and obviously the more barrels you have the longer you're going to be able to provide for yourself in the dry season um, but I think I'm pretty good I feel I feel proud that we did this. Don't you feel proud? Yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> okay. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a chance to get into your garden today.